Hey, what's going on everyone? Veggie here for Serpent X Tech. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at Lux OS that can uh, make your ASIC a lot more efficient or push it extremely high as long as you got adequate cooling or thermals uh, in your environment that this ASIC miner is going to be in. Lux OS is a uh, pretty, Luxor team in general is pretty cool uh, team, Luxor Technologies, but you just go to their luxor.tech slash firmware website. And we go ahead and click download Lux OS. Now there is a compatibility guide that you should probably check out and make sure that your device is compatible. Our device is. Depending on the miner, sometimes it'll be on the front sticker of the plate that goes in front of your control board. But in this particular miner, it's on the side here. And so you can see the model number and version number, and that will help you check or compare against the compatibility list that's found on various uh, firmware websites. Uh, we do not have uh, a Xilinx or a Beaglebone, a Beaglebone, whatever you want to call it. AM Logic is what we have. It is compatible. We found that on the side of our miner. Uh, let me go ahead and show you that real quick or insert where it is on your ASIC. We got the S19K Pro is what we're using, but just verify your particular ASIC. Um, and then we're going to use the commander, right? The commander for LuxOS. They got downloads for Windows, Linux, Apple, all that good stuff. Windows version just came out and then they got the CLI, but we're just going to use the, the commander. So we're just going to click Windows. It's going to download in our normal spot. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that because I already have it downloaded and I installed it on my desktop. Real simple EXE. There it is. And so we can use this to find our miner. Um, and you just need to configure your network, right? So configure network. You tell the IP range of your network. We already have it defined here two different ways. One, we could put the IP of the actual machine once we identify that. And how do you identify the IP? Well, you can use Angry IP Scanner or a number of different IP scanner tools, or you can use your router, which is what I did, to find that device. It shows up as AntMiner, and I put in that specific IP. Or if I want to search all devices, I put in that specific range, and it needs to be just as you see it here, right? So your first IP uh, of your range dash your last ip of your range and it will go ahead and scan through and then save changes make sure you uncheck the default ones these two right here are, are, are in here by default so just uncheck those hit save changes and now we could scan the network and let that thing run it is going to be a minute as it goes through your entire network scanning devices that are not only compatible but incompatible and it will tell you in the list here shortly uh, first things first, I want to make sure that you are aware that your device should be on default settings, and that includes the password. So if you change the password, go ahead and change it back to root. I don't like leaving it that way. It's very insecure. I wouldn't rely solely on your network to protect you. I would still update the password for all your ASICs and devices. Uh, but in order for, uh, you know, Lux OS, uh, even Brains, maybe Vanish, maybe uh, even Bitbix, um, just leave it whatever its stock is for your particular ASIC. So if it was admin, admin, put it back to admin, admin. If it was root, root, put it back to root, root. You just go log into your miner, put in your current password, type in your new one twice, and then hit save. Now that that's done, you can see it picked up the board and it told us the control board. Um, but then we also have some incompatible devices, right? So this is the wet's miner. This, I believe, uh, is, it, I don't, it's funny that I think it's a bit main device. This is the iPolo. So we're just going to select this guy right here, and then we're going to go ahead and click Install Lux OS. Now it's going to take us through a few steps, and there is a license that's required. Uh, so reach out to the team and, and request that license. You know, you can contact the support team through their main website. If you scroll down that download center uh, in the firmware section, it says Get in Touch. Um, there's a form you can fill out. You can go ahead and tell them, uh, you know, what, what you're trying to do. Tell them the product, tell them the subject name, license for S19J Pro, license for whatever it might be. But you can see, just choose Luxor Firmware, put in your first name, last name, email, company name if you got one, subject, license uh, request for S19K Pro, description, put in whatever details you want, and go ahead and get that license. You will need that on standby. As it goes through its install process, we're going to be required or requested of that license here shortly. So you click begin. It has my license already in there. Um, if, if if you didn't, if this is your first time, you would put in your license and you would click activate. 
it would check with the server and then you would start the install. In my case, it sees the license I already had, it detected it. So I'm just gonna click start install. But for you again, get that license from the Luxor team, uh, put it in, hit activate, checks, and then you click start install. And now we could see the installation process. We can just let this baby ride out for a bit. I hear the machine screaming in the background behind me um, as you know, there's no pool set up. It's installing firmware, all kinds of stuff. So we could see copying files. There's a progress bar. The GUI uh, the, that the team put together for the Lux OS Commander looks really good. Uh, the Brains team did one as well. Uh, I would say the GUI, the, the uh, BOS toolbox is not as good looking. I love the gradient, uh, you know, look and color scheme and moving wallpaper of this particular GUI or interface that we have here. So the Luxor uh, tech team gets a plus in there. I also love their interface overall. It's really good when we go to manage the miner. It, it's definitely really good compared to Brains. Brains is pretty good as well, but Brains has a better auto tuning um, as of right now. And Luxor and their team has auto tuning coming soon, but there's a lot of presets. So there's give and takes on both sides, pros and cons on both sides. You can see I just heard the machine stop. It says success. And so we could go ahead and close this. Um, if we wanted to, I believe this bar would continue for a bit as the miner power cycles and goes into it. Now we just need to go to this IP address and log in to get that bad boy set up and configured. I'm going to connect it to the Luxor pool itself. Um, you can always go to miningpoolstats.stream and look for the best pool for your location, your uh, you know location as far as geology. Right. If you're in Russia, you want to be connected to a Russian server or close to a Russian server. If you're in the EU, look for a European server. If you're in the US, look for a, uh, a US server. And sometimes there's East Coast and West Coast. Just choose what's best for you. Low latency, low ping uh, and low response time. What's best for you. But for Luxor, it's very simple. You just click sign in in the top right here. Um, and then you got to create a login if you haven't created one already. Once you're logged in there, we need to go ahead and get our information for our particular miner uh, in general. And if I click the little cog wheel here down next to worker status, you can see there's the pool and there's the worker name. We could always change that name Theodore to whatever we want, or we could leave it, whatever you want. You just customize it, you know, XSF1. We could say S like, for example, S19K Pro. We could do all kinds of stuff. So just give it a name so you know what this device is on your network, but it's always your uh, with Pools like this, uh, not just Luxor, but via BTC, F2 pool, stuff like that. It's always going to be your account dot your worker name instead of, you know, like a Bitcoin address dot your worker name. Uh, so just have that on standby as we get ready to log into this machine. So let's close this out. Now that Luxor, uh, Luxor has um, or the OS commander has installed the operating system, uh, we can just click this right here. It's going to go straight to it. Boom. Now it's still booting up. There it is. There's the GUI. Nice, beautiful looking GUI graphs, the whole nine yards. Now, I did a video about how to tune in this already, but I just wanted to show you the start to finish uh, aspect of installing Lux OS on your ASIC miner. Always go, in my opinion, and I know don't change the password because then these programs like the Lux OS Commander or uh, the Brains uh, BOS toolbox won't pick up your miner if you did change the password, but just give it a different name, right? Give it a name so you know what it is. You know, this is Chris's S19K, whatever you want, save. You can add a static IP if you wanted to, static or DHCP. Firmware updates are right here. Logs, I love logs. This The LuxOS compared to Brains has a better logging system because uh, I can actually download. I can export stuff, right? I can look at the history and I can download these files. It's beautiful, I love that. I wish Brains will add that as well. Pools, here's the pool, default pool. It already has my, like, because it's Lux OS, it already has the default in there. You could see that. And then I just need to copy this worker name, sorry for the ping there, and then paste that in. Um, and then we're, we are good to go. Uh, okay, well then I'll just do, type it in myself. I don't know why it's not copying and pasting, but, um, oh, I have to delete it. That's right. So I got to add new pool, then paste it, go ahead and copy that and then give it a password and then save pool. And then I can delete the pool above it. You can't edit the one that's there. You just got to delete the one above it. And if you need to add more pools, you just click, uh, you know, add, add, add and keep going from there. 
Uh, so we'll just delete that one. I don't like leaving the stock password, the root. I hate that. Um, so we need to go ahead and change that. But it is great to see such a wonderful GUI um, and, and the tools uh, at our disposal. Matter of fact, let's look, talk about those tools real quick before I let you go. Target hashboard temperature, it's a lot lower than what I see on Brains. Brains allows you to push it a little bit higher. The max um, is 75 degrees. It's defaulted at 60. Hot board temperature um, is 75. I seen on Brains 85 uh, and even stock 85. Dangerous board temperature, same thing. Uh, high of 75 or 85 on stock. Uh, and then there's ATM or advanced thermal management where you can turn this on and choose your minimum profile. Right. Let's say we want to run a minimum profile of 245 megahertz and a high of default uh, 670 megahertz. It will, depending on thermals and the environmental conditions, it will pick the best profile uh, based on a number of variables. There's immersion mode. We could just turn that on and tell it, hey, we're dunk, baby. We're in that liquid. We're nice and cool. Uh, we could turn the fans on manual. We want to run 100%. Um, and then we could adjust it even further here. We, right now, it's only detecting uh, two fans. Uh, because the other two are unplugged at the moment. Um, and then preset profiles, as I mentioned in a previous video, I went through all of this. Go check that out. There's all kinds of good defaults. These defaults, those seem to more apply to the S19J Pros, not the K Pros. And the K Pros are more efficient. So what I would say, just like I said in that video, is choose a profile, see where it likes to sit. You can see under the dashboard or the preset profiles, you'll eventually see these chips turn green or light green or yellow or orange. If you start seeing a lot of red or grays, that means your 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 chips are not happy and you need to adjust accordingly. But choose the default profile or the, the preset profiles, find out where it likes to sit, where, where the device is most happy, and then create custom profiles accordingly. Go check out that video as I mentioned. But that is how you install Lux OS using the Lux Commander, uh, OS Commander, making it super easy, clean, simple GUI, and great job to the Luxor team. Uh, also, I want to uh, provide a huge shout out to uh, the people that helped make this build possible, this immersion build that we're working towards. Alter Tech, uh, Unminable, which just add this, added the Carlson uh, cryptocurrency uh, to, to their data that you can mine to as well as latest-miner.web.app. Uh, I'll have them linked down in the description, and you just have yourself a wonderful day. But do me a favor, hit the like button on the way out. Make sure to get subscribed, hit the notification bell to stay up to date, as well as check out links in the description to help support us and what we do here. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.